Hey, what's up, guys? So yesterday I put out a video on my YouTube channel talking about the end of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and basically just giving my prediction for whether or not Aerith would live or die. And if you want to see that video, if you haven't seen it yet, I'll put it in the pinned comment of this video if you want to look at the before and after. This is going to be a short video where now I've streamed the end of the game. I beat it today. Uh, I'll leave a link to the entire playlist also in the pinned comment if you want to watch any of the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth streams. But I've played through it. I beat it. It was incredibly emotional. I think I spent like the last two hours of the stream crying on and off, which, you know, whatever. Um, but the I thought the game was great. And I really liked the ending. Uh, I'm not going to dive super deep into the ending or the or the theory crafting or anything like that. They did kill Aerith, but I also think that Cloud saved Aerith and created a, an alternate timeline, one where she's dead, one where she's alive. And I actually think it was pretty brilliant of Square to create a narrative and create a story that has, you know, multiple timelines and even maybe multiple universes. It allowed Square to kind of have their cake and eat it too. It allowed them to kill Aerith, but not necessarily the Aerith. They killed an Aerith. And uh, I don't think Aerith's story is done. I think we will continue to see Aerith. And you continue to see Aerith at the end of Rebirth, even after she's dead, as Cloud continues to interact with her. Now you're left wondering, and I've seen a lot of debate about whether or not uh, Aerith is actually alive in a separate timeline and Cloud is able to sense that. Or if, you know, Cloud's schizophrenia schizophrenia and his mental issues are the reason, you know, and also his reluctance and even his refusal to accept her death is playing into why he's still talking to Aerith and, and having interactions with Aerith. Is it something that he's dreaming up in his head because he can't accept what happened? Um, I think personally, so far from what I've seen, he did create a second timeline by interfering with her death. In fact, I'll show you right here because um, I had it pulled up here. I was looking at it, kind of getting my thoughts together. You'll see that he uh, he sees Sephiroth coming down and he interferes with the original scene here. And he swings the sword. And right there when the sword connects, you'll notice this kind of rainbow filter kind of comes up and and this rainbow filter stays on throughout this scene while Aerith is alive here it's in the background it's not in the background of this scene before those swords touch it's it only appears when those swords touch when Cloud interferes with Sephiroth attempting to kill Aerith and uh, another thing is when Tifa and Barrett and the rest of the party run up and see Aerith laying there You'll notice that this right here, the the blood on Aerith's hand and the blood behind her, it's there, it's not there, and then it's there again. Uh, the same thing on the hands. There's blood on there's blood on their hands, and then uh, you'll notice that it's gone, and then it's back. So I I think that especially since we're kind of seeing this from the perspective of Tifa and Barrett and the rest of the party as they're running up. I think that there are different ways that you can interpret it, and I'm not going to dive into all of that as I'm, you know, making this video because I'm exhausted and I, I want some time to process this game before I start talking about, you know, this is what I believe happened. But just based on the different filters that were used and the what they're doing with the blood being there, not being there, and the fact that during one of the the very last scenes when Aerith is interacting with Cloud, Nanaki senses her. She touches Nanaki and he senses Aerith. So I don't think that this is just Cloud's hallucination. I do think that he interfered with that strike from Sephiroth and it, it, it created more timelines, one in which he saved her and one in which, um, you know, she's dead. I don't know the full significance of these two different timelines. And I don't know if we will know the full existence of them until the final game. But what I will say is that I think there's going to be two groups of people. I think there's going to be people 
like me that are so happy with this because I really do feel like Square gave me just a buffet uh, in terms of they basically gave me everything. Uh, she can live. But here's the death scene. Um, you know, here's the sadness and, and the pain and the loss and the confusion. But here's also the hope and the light and, you know, the, the possibility that she's not gone and that things could still be different. I think Square did a really good job writing this story in a way where they were where they were able to deliver on multiple fronts at once. But I also think that there will be people out there that are unhappy with this because Square did not pick a side. They're riding the fence, so to speak. They're they're not doubling down on one or the other necessarily. And I think that this scene will lose potency for some fans over, the, you know, compared to the original. I think this scene will lose its potency for some fans because Square is you know, giving you both at the same time. You've got your cake and you're eating it too kind of thing. And I do think there will be a segment of the fan base that's disappointed because they wanted Square to kind of be truer to the original, kill her, double down on that sadness, that pain, and that loss that really was crucial to the story of the first game. Aerith's sacrifice is completely necessary in the first game. And that's what makes it so painful because you wish that Aerith didn't die. You wish that Aerith could live in the original Final Fantasy VII, but if you pay attention, you know that she can't. And I think a lot of people are carrying that feeling into Rebirth, and in Rebirth, it's it's not the same reality. I, I really don't think we will be able to, you know, fully grade this ending fully grade this death scene until we play the third game. Sadly, uh, I think we can theory craft and we can talk about it. And, you know, it, uh, of course we can discuss the emotional impact or lack thereof. You'll have your own opinions for you. I've seen so many people say that, you know, that the back and forth between Aerith being alive, dead, alive, dead, saved, not saved, it was so confusing for so many people that it pulled them out of the emotional impact of the scene. I think that's completely valid. Again, people that just wanted them to double down and pick a side, either save her or kill her. Don't double dip. I think that's completely valid too. I just don't fall into those camps. I personally, this is just my take and my opinion, I'm so happy. For me, the entire thing was like, incredibly emotional, incredibly exhausting, and yeah, incredibly confusing, but I still loved it. I thought this scene in Rebirth would be the defining scene. This would be where she either lives or dies, and I didn't have the forethought or the foresight to see that Square had arranged this in a way where they could give us the death scene and still find a way to keep Aerith around for the third game or or bring her back. I, as long as they do it in a way that is as well written as the rest of the remake trilogy so far, then I'm completely on board. Um, I don't feel too comfortable giving my final thoughts or conclusive thoughts right now. I just really feel like I need some time to marinate on this ending and everything but I will say that the emotional impact was there for me I was absolutely crushed but the the hope is is still there as well and I'm glad it's still there I don't know what they're going to do in the third game and I'm glad I don't know what they're going to do in the third game I'll sit for a while on this and think about it I'll watch other content creators react to it I'll theory craft a little bit with my chat I'm looking forward to watching Maximilian dudes uh thoughts on the ending I know that uh you know his interpretation of the end of this game and the story of this game uh ruffled a few feathers I'm looking forward to uh reacting to his thoughts on it and other content creators but right now I'll just say I liked it. I, I think it's an open book. I think that nothing is off limits, that it could go in any direction still, and I like that. I feel like the the writing was top tier. I feel like the way that they explored emotions uh, was great. I feel like there was so much depth to the dialogue and the characters and the motivations and the, the performances. I mean, everything was just S tier, in my opinion. 
So I don't know where it's going to go. I don't know if it'll pay off or not. I don't know if they'll stick the landing, but based on everything they've done so far, I trust them and I'm looking forward to playing the next game.